Hello everybody, this is Steve here and welcome to Gopher Hall. If you haven't started your business yet, what are you waiting for? If you don't start your business this year, you'll be at least one year older when you do. So get started today. All right, in today's uh, podcast, we're going to be talking about collections that are overdue from the last year. Here we are entering the new year. Uh, how do you go about uh, collecting from lawn care customers who just haven't quite got around to paying you yet? Um, and uh, one of our forum members on the gopherforum.com site wrote to us, he said, uh, Last year was his first year running his lawn care business, and he made it through the whole season with only one customer failing to pay. Now that the end of the season is here, I have several previously prompt paying customers that have failed to pay their final bill. Is this something out of the ordinary, or is this uh, common around the holiday season? And then uh, one of our other four members said, it happens to him all the time. Last season, he had a property manager owe him $1,500, and it took until February to finally get paid. As of now, he said, he has some past due accounts, but it's normal, and I just know that after a few uh, mailings or a phone call, it'll finally trickle in. The holidays and the economy and people's ignorance and are basically all most likely of the causes of this. Uh, he said, just remember it and either don't work for them again in the following season or just accept the fact that they're late payers and you definitely have to keep, the, keep on them. So I asked him, I said, what kind of things uh, should a lawn care business owner do to get those bills paid uh, that are lagging from last season and how long should you wait before they, you, you, know, you take further steps? So he said to me, he said, well, this is what he does. Uh, first, he sends out the, uh, to the lawn care customer a copy of the invoice with a big stamp on it that says payment due. Uh, if he hears nothing from them after a few weeks, then he goes to a letter. And he said, remember to include the past due invoice. Uh, and that past due really scares people. He says, uh, it's powerful. So always remember to put uh, you know, a bold past due on the invoice. Uh, if this doesn't work, you go to a phone call or you stop by the house. Be persistent. That's, all, that's the key. Uh, they will get sick of seeing your face and they're, they're basically going to be get sick of seeing that invoice is in the mail so they'll just finally pay you. Uh, people are either forgetful or ignorant and sometimes uh, the, the original gets lost in the mail and they pay the bill on the second notice. Sometimes they don't have the money or they're embarrassed but they eventually do get the money to you. He said, just don't forget it though. The next season, if you still choose to work with them, raise your rates. He said, for the fact that they are paying the work for and they don't, they don't honor their uh, due dates. I have some people, he said, that uh, pay their bills so fast that I didn't even think they got the bill yet. Now, as far as property managers go, he said, uh, he had one that owed him $1,500. He said he was just persistent with him and he knew that, uh, that he was getting on the guy's nerves. And, uh, he also knew that the property manager was in other states with other properties. He also thought he was too lazy to, to find someone else to do the lawn care work, so eventually he would uh, get paid. But if another month would have gone by, he would have been waiting outside the guy's house. And going to court isn't always an option because the money uh, being owed is less than $100. Uh, he said, just chalk it up to timing, holidays, the economy, and the fact that you can't dangle the no more services until the account is brought to date factor over their heads. Uh, you'll get your money just not as fast as you wanted to. Uh, just face it, he said, that landscapers and lawn care business owners uh, tend to be at the bottom of the, the bill paying food chain and people will pay their other bills first and get to the lawn care bill when they're ready. Um, so then I said to him, I said, can you tell us, uh, you know, what are your suggestions about raising your lawn care rates once you get paid? Should you send a letter to them the next day saying something to the effect of like, you know, I'm raising your lawn prices by X percentage or should you wait and then notify them? Also, what percentage should you raise the rates by? And he said a lot of these lawn care customers that have trouble paying uh, are renters. And uh, they have tiny yards. And a lot of times he cuts these tiny yards for $20 a cut. So uh, he said, I would finally get uh, paid at the end of the season. The next season's welcome letter uh, would basically explain that we're raising our rates due to the cost of doing business. And I would go from $20 to $25. That way, if you lose the customer, it's one less headache. If they still want to have you take care of their property, then you make an extra 5 bucks for putting up with them. Uh, on this small scale, it's too complicated, he said, to raise the rates by a certain percentage. It's just easier to raise the cut by the price of the cut by, say, $5. But you should just raise your rates starting with the new season. If you had to raise your rates during the season, I would say give people 30-day notice, write a letter uh, saying that as of June 1st, you'll need to now charge whatever. But he said he usually does contracts, and it's easier just to honor the contract for the length uh, instead of going through the hassle of writing up a new contract. And he said, forget about charging late fees. Just be glad if they pay their bill on time. And he said, sometimes renters will not release. So uh, you'll have to deal with another renter. But eventually, uh, they'll, you'll get paid because they're afraid to lose their security deposit. And he said, which reminds him, don't do any work for a renter without talking to the landlord or property manager. 
renters in his area come and go. There's a lot of college kids, and they just drop out, they disappear, whatever. He, think, he, he thinks that the reason the majority of the bad payers are renters is because he says when he gets hired by a homeowner, he also gets a lot of business from word of mouth around the homeowner. And when you get one house, you usually get a couple other neighbors. So uh, you could guess if Mrs. Smith isn't paying her bills and her house gets skipped, uh, this round of cuts, all the neighbors will start talking, oh, Mrs. Smith doesn't want her lawn to look good, uh, and, and she'll start looking bad in front of the neighbors. And he said, and also, look on the bright side. If they uh, skip a couple of payments and you, you, know, you skip mowing their lawns, then when the customer finally gets around to paying the bill, uh, you can charge them for a big cleanup. He says, but try uh, to get paid up front for this cleanup because they'll probably try not to pay for this bill for sure. He, when, I, when he was talking about security deposit, I was asking him, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about how the security deposit factors in to lawn care and getting paid? And he says he's not sure about how things work in other areas, but in his area, a tenant's supposed to take care of the property, especially the lawn. And some landlords will pay it themselves to keep up appearances, but most require the tenant to do so. So if at the end of the lease, the yard is a jungle, the security deposit is held. Uh, and, used, and it's used to get the property back in line and whatever else went wrong, patch holes in the wall or whatever. So if you previously spoke with the landlord or the property manager and told them the tenant stopped paying the bills and you're terminating services until the bills are paid, they'll either get the tenant to pay the bill or authorize you to continue services to be paid by the security deposit. This is just for some cuts, he says, not for a whole season's worth of cutting, but a few to finish up the summer or whatever it might be. But as long as you inform the landlord, uh, they usually take care of everything because it's their investment. They don't want to make the, the neighbors angry or have a bad tenant who destroys their property. In a lot of ways, you act as the landlord's eyes and ears. So you scratch their back and they'll scratch yours. Uh, so in the end, when the lease is up, you submit the bill to the landlord or property manager and they'll pay you out of the escrow account. Most of the time, if the tenant loses the security deposit, it's due to a lot of things, not just the lawn. And if it's just the lawn that the tenant owns, the landlord uh, will say something like, uh, you must pay all your bills, or they'll be paid uh, by your security. So I hope this helps you out, get paid from the last season services before you start offering new services. And remember, if they were late making their payments last year, you may want to consider raising your rates. So I hope this uh, podcast has helped you out, and I hope this has uh, enlightened you a bit. Uh, get on the go for form and let us know how this works out for you. So until the next time we speak, always remember to dream it, build it, go for it. And ultimately, uh, this show wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for Gopher Software. So if you get a chance, and you're a lawn care business operator, uh, you need software to run your business, even if you're just starting. The Gopher Software is very inexpensive. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to get everything organized. It's going to allow you to get all your bills organized, all your schedule organized. Uh, you're going to be able to print out daily worksheets. You're going to be able to print out invoices when you need them. It works with the Palm software. It also has a barcode reader so you can scan in when jobs are completed or if invoices are paid. And one of the biggest mistakes you see a lot of lawn care businesses make is that they don't keep track of how much people owe them, they don't get their invoices out on time, or they mess up their schedules. So this also can track your chemical applications, your employee times, and it can also track your equipment preventive maintenance repair schedules. So if you get a chance, get on gophersoftware.com, download the free trial version, try it out for 30 days, and until the next time we see you, always remember to dream it, build it, go for it.